everyone that's joining in. Thank you all for joining in. We're just waiting for a few more to join in. Uh, we have a couple minutes more on the clock. Uh, we will start in a few minutes. <clears throat> Hello, Dr. JJ. We're just uh, letting a few more participants in and we'll get started in a couple of moments. Uh, if I'm audible and if my video is visible, just want to check that. We can hear you fine, but we haven't been able to see your video yet. Uh, is, is it okay now? It's up now. Yes, uh, just JJ. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. So very good afternoon to all the participants. Thank you so much for joining. We'll give this a couple of more minutes and get started uh, by 11.32. All right, I think we can get started. A very warm welcome to all of you from a very hot and humid Hyderabad. My name is Dr. Ritwik Mishra. I'm a senior vice president and head of consulting at Nolscape. Now, some of you have heard about Nolscape. We are leaders in experiential learning and we do try and release one product every quarter. But this one actually holds a very special value and special place. It actually provides or puts a practical tool in the hands of every practitioner to do three things. One, enhance their level of self-awareness. Two, improve the quality of relationship that they have at the workplace. And three, enhance their productivity. And so I'm really happy and excited to be here with all of you today in announcing the launch of our next product called Giving and Receiving Feedback. Joining me on this momentous occasion is industry stalwart, Dr. Jagatish Jainan, fondly known as Dr. JJ, and my co-host, Karuna Rabender, facilitator and coach par excellence. So thank you so much again. And if we can move to the agenda slide, over the next, one hour, we will talk to you a little bit about Nolskip. We will then get into a conversation with all of you and Dr. JJ on the importance 
criticality and challenges of feedback in the real life. We will then go on to unveil the simulation and leave some time at the end for question and answers. With that, if we can move to the next slide, I'll quickly take a few minutes up front to talk about Nolscape as an organization. Now at the core, we are a global organization and we are operating today across 25 countries, either directly or through our partnership. Very recently, we also got into a strategic partnership with NIIT that enhanced our capability and strengthened our solutioning capacity. We also work across a diverse set of clients across sectors. If we move to the next slide. Now the solutions that we have enable organizations to take transformational journeys across three broad topics, which are culture, digital, and leadership. As organizations are coming back from the pandemic, organizations are trying to create a culture within the organization that enables professionals to feel a connectedness to the organization, to feel a belongingness towards the organization, have purpose in the work that they are doing, and thereby be more engaged and enhance their productivity. Organizations are also trying to create an internal ecosystem that enables them to make the most out of new technologies and digital transformation. And finally, organizations are also looking at creating a pool of leaders within that help them move through these transformational journeys, that help them take on um, crisis like the one that we recently saw, and create a pool from where leaders can be promoted from within. They're also looking at creating a leadership pool that connects with the broader, uh, with the broader professional group through empathy and through emotional intelligence. And so our set of solutions that, are, that we offer enable organizations to, to build this transformational journey across culture, digital, and leadership. If we move to the next slide. Now the solutions that we offer across those three uh, broad transformational journeys uh, are built using the large suite of simulations that we have. And these simulations cut across two broad categories, which is leading now and leading next. Leading now is a set of simulations that help professionals build capabilities in the here and now, to be effective in the here and now. And these include examples like trust sim, critical thinking, or build your business. Leading next enables organization to be positioned for the future and, and cover simulations like data and decisions, digital transformation, et cetera. One of uh, a few points to be called out here are, we now have the capability of building simulations ground up, aligning to the culture and context of the organization. This is our latest offering, it's called Genie. We are also able to combine a lot of these simulations and connect them to assessments and coaching to build long-term journeys for specific cohorts like first-time managers. Uh, if we go to the next slide. Now, one of our biggest differentiators in the market is the learner analytics that we are able to offer at the end of each simulation. So at the end of every simulation, a learner gets a report, and that's a very detailed, rich insight into how the professional has done on each of the attributes of that simulation. This 
this talent analytics can be provided not just at a individual level, but even at the team level, at a group level, business unit level, or even at the org level. And it enables leaders across the organization to get a view of how their professionals are doing on some of those critical attributes. But more importantly, what I really enjoy about this report is the fact that it can lead to multiple informal conversations and therefore social learning in an organization. And so that was a very quick recap of who we are as an organization, the kind of services products that we are offering. If any of what you have heard so far resonates with you and you would like to know more information about it, there will be an email that will be flashed at the end of this presentation. Please do reach out to us to have detailed conversations on that topic. With that, if we can move to the next segment, which is uh, we want to now engage with you and Dr. JJ as well on the importance and criticality of feedback as a mechanism in an organization. Before I do a very quick introduction of Dr. JJ, he currently leads learning and talent development at Bosch, has over 25 years of rich experience across several organizations and sectors. Dr. JJ, it's an honor for all of us. Thank you so much for taking out time to be here with us and Thank joining you. us on this occasion of this launch event. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, with that, if we can get into some poll questions. All right, if we can ena enable this for the, uh, for the, for the audience, uh, on a scale of one to five, how important do you think is the culture of giving and receiving feedback in an organization to the success of the organization? So those of you who are responding to the poll, you can just take the poll that's come up in front of you. You don't have to enter it in the chat window. Just click on what you think is uh, your response on a scale of one to five. A couple of seconds more there. Okay, excellent. Um, so definitely moving towards the higher end of the spectrum, very important to extremely important for organizations to have a culture of giving and receiving feedback uh, um, aligned to the organizational success. Uh, Dr. JJ, just wanted to bring you in here at this point in time and hear your comments on thoughts on how are you uh, trying to build a culture of giving and receiving feedback at Bosch? Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks, Dr. Rithik. And uh, good morning, or rather, good afternoon. Yeah, close to good afternoon. Good morning, everyone. Yeah. And uh, when it comes to feedback, right, I mean, for us, uh, feedback is very critical. And that is something which we value a lot across levels. Now, how are we trying to build it? Now, one is there are formal ways by which uh, we kind of make sure that there is an opportunity given for uh, for any associate to provide a feedback and uh, for any leader to provide a feedback to a team member that is formal now one thing what uh, we all uh, make sure here is it is not just a feedback is top down uh, the way we make sure that feedback is given is also bottom that is something which we bring in very very carefully because uh, typically, when it is a feedback in a traditional style, the belief is that it comes top down uh, on saying that, hey, this can be done, that can be done. But what we are doing is consciously we are bringing in a model. We are practicing few things which helps us uh, get feedback bottom. That is something which we are which we are kind of practicing. I would say one of the variants of the model that we are using. Second is uh, the frequency. 
Now, typically, it happens, say, you give a feedback once in three months, once in six months, once in eight months, whatever it is. I mean, typically. But what we are doing now is we are making it, uh, I would say, real time and whenever needed. That's what we are kind of encouraging people to do. Rather than telling you fix up meeting three months later, six months later on a calendar and then go give a feedback, rather than that, you say, hey, can we discuss over a cup of coffee? And uh, that is how we are kind of enabling it now and making it very frequent. And even for my team, uh, it happens both ways, uh, over a call, uh, over just a kind of a quick discussion as we walk around the corridor or whatever it is. I mean, feedback, uh, anytime, uh, I can put it uh, like uh, ATM, it is anytime feedback is what we are looking at. And whenever needed, it should be given. Uh, we should not wait for a time to give feedback. Uh, that is my point of view, Doctor. No, so this is this, this is what we are doing. Just to summarize, we are not just sticking to top down. We are looking at top down, bottom up. Uh, second is we are looking at a, a frequency which is not so so calendarized, but it is regular whenever needed. And three is we make it sh as short as possible, or just a quick call. We give a feedback, or as informal as pos possible. Or a cup of coffee, we give and take feedback. These are the things what we are following. Absolutely, Dr. J. Thank you so much for your thoughts. I think you bring up a few points which are absolutely important and get missed out in the whole process of feedback, which is it has to be timely. It has to be right after the event. And it has to be, it can go in any direction. It can go sideways, it can go uh, bottom up, it can go top down as well. And some of these factors get covered in our simulation as well. Uh, so thank you so much for sharing those thoughts, uh, Dr. JJ. If we can move to the next question on this. So polling the audience again on a scale of one to five, how would you rate the quality of feedback that you currently give? I'm assuming all of you on the call are providing feedback in some shape and form. If not, you might be receiving. How do you rate the quality of that conversation? Should we see if the results are in? Excellent. So, you know, it's, it's heartening at one end to see that, you know, people are getting and giving good quality feedback. There is still a segment that says, you know, there is opportunities for us to further enhance the quality of feedback. Dr. JJ, I'm sure in your experience, you've seen a lot of leaders do this as a check in the box as well, you know, uh, just to get the conversation out. And especially given the virtual environment in which we are working, a lot of um, uh, online conversations happening, a lot of online giving and receiving of feedback happening. What is your take on how can we maintain uh, an effective quality of conversation, quality of feedback in the current day and age. The, this, there's another complexity overlaying this is the multi-generational workforce. And so you have different generations that have different expectations of how to give and receive feedback as well. So with all this complexity at the workplace, how are you and Bosch driving quality in these conversations? Yeah, see, quality of feedback is something very, very critical. See, uh, the very crux of why do we give feedback, right? So one is uh, a feedback uh, should always be given to improve confidence of the person who is receiving the feedback, point number one. Now, when I say improve confidence, uh, it doesn't mean that you can't give a feedback saying that you need to improve on a particular parameter or a particular behavior. We should do that. But the way we do that should build confidence to them, saying that, hey, this is what has been observed as observed. So I would say observed as observed without a tinge of our flavor or a color, without a tinge of a feedback provider's flavor or color should be there when we give a feedback. That is the first parameter when I say quality of feedback needs to be maintained. Second is in terms of what is that uh, it is going to benefit someone who is receiving the feedback if he or she 
listens to it uh, it i mean with interest and really tries to make some changes now first as i told us without the tinge of the color or flavor of the feedback provider which is which could become a bias second is what is in it for the person who is receiving the feedback to really kind of take it up and act and how it would reward and the third point what i would like to mention here is uh, uh, i would say uh, it is very important to understand why do we give feedback right i mean there are three things in a in a human being one is a body two is a mind and three is a intellect now when i give feedback to someone what do i expect i expect the person uh, rather i'll not even use the word expect what do i think it will happen i think the person will take the feedback and have it in his or her intellect so that next time when a similar situation happens the intellect will guide the person to behave in the right way take the right decision or make the right choices i mean just i'm making it very simple yeah. now what is the difference between mind and intellect mind is just a flow of thought and intellect is like the banks of the river uh, which actually controls the flow so if i give a feedback to my team member it should help the person understand hey this is my flow of thought and based on this flow of thought i behaved in a certain way i acted in a certain way or i took a certain decision in the interest of the organization which did or did not work and here is someone telling me something better i hold it on my intellect which will guide me to take the right decision which will guide me to behave in the right way which will guide me to do the right thing for the organization or personal whatever it is so this is how i see a quality of feedback should be a remove your color or flavor which is a bias to make sure that it adds a lot of benefit for the person who is receiving it three look at it from a perspective of will it actually land in the intellect of the person who is receiving the feedback so that the person could respond appropriately rather than reacting for feedback i would say these are the three key critic critical factors i would say excellent uh, dr jay jay couldn't have been uh, put more eloquently i think that whole visual about the bank really resonates with a lot of people um, and i think two points which is you know removing bias so critical yet so difficult uh, for leaders to step away from their own judgments and keep it to facts and make it actionable for the person so that they actually drive towards some uh, shift and change yep. thank you so much uh, for sharing that dr jj if we Thanks. can go to the next uh, poll audience so how often do you use a structured method uh, for giving and receiving feedback um is it infrequently very frequently if very frequently how frequently Okay, shall we see if the results are in? All right. So majority saying sometimes. Now the question is: Are you giving feedback sometimes, or are you using structured conversation for a feedback? Right. Uh, one of the things, Dr. JJ, we find it extremely tough is. especially when it's a critical conversation when it's a critical feedback we come across uh, certain frameworks it's very difficult for us to recall that framework uh, in a high energy uh, uh, um, critical conversation or a critical feedback scenario uh, any thoughts on how can we control our emotions uh, still be structured in a extremely tough conversation very very nice question and a very very important question for all of us because especially when it comes to a critical feedback uh we get attached to to what has happened and we end up uh, providing response to the person or rather on the person not on the action 
So this is something what we need to look at, or at least this is what I look at. I am not going by the book, uh, what is being uh, written. I am going by practice on what what we normally do or what I normally do. So one is we need to look. Uh, we need not look at the person, but we need to look at the action. Step one. Step two. Now, when we end up giving a critical feedback, why does that attachment come, or why do we get attached to the uh, uh, to what we do and give a feedback which tends to lose tool, which tends to lose structure, which tends to lose the crux on what the feedback has to be given is because uh, we all get into a mode of uh, I plus I want. Let me take an example. My team member has performed an action. That action has resulted in something. Now, when I look at that something, if I really try to, if I really uh, 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 try to uh, link it with the, uh, I would say, uh, uh, is this what I wanted, right? Uh, and then I try to give a feedback critically. Then that is a challenge. Now, if I try try to delink with what I wanted, and I say, is this the right thing for the situation? Is this the right thing for the organization? Is it the right thing for the for the issue to be sorted out, then I think the structure falls in place automatically. When structure goes loose, when, when we lose the structure is only when we attach ourselves to the outcome of the action, we attach ourselves to the person who has given the feedback, we attach ourselves to the, uh, uh, to the desires that we have on how, uh, I would say, on how we wanted the outcome to be. Right. The moment it is not as what we expected, then automatically it becomes everything goes loose. Instead, yeah. if we take a step back and say that, hey, this is what happened and this, this is the action and uh, this is what has happened. And let me see this as to what it is and then talk about it. Let me remove what I wanted out of the action. Let me remove, let me add only what is good for the organization, good for the situation, good for the context. If we go with that approach, I think. Uh, the structure will fall in place automatically. Uh, referring books or referring to material is the second part. But over and above that, this is something which is the base in my view, I would say. Uh, absolutely. I think one of the biggest um, causes of this um, bad feedback is the expectations that we carry into that conversation. Exactly. If we are able to separate ourselves from the expectation and just focus on the action and the outcome of that action and just be very um, fact driven, remove our biases, like you said on the earlier response. I think uh, it should make it easier for us to even have tougher conversations. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Dr. JJ. I think we have one last question for you. Uh, given the vast experience that you have um, and the way you have grown in your career, I'm sure feedback has played a significant role in where you are today. Are yeah. there, is there one or two war stories that you can share with us where feedback was the critical reason uh, for the shift uh, that came into your development or the way you approach your career? Yeah, definitely. So probably the first thing I would like to share is uh, with an organization where I was into consulting and uh, we were, I mean, I was, I had the responsibility of, uh, I would say, selling uh, a solution for a customer where I missed a zero in my total calculation means I missed a million dollar. And uh, the, 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 the bid was submitted, the negotiation done, and finally we find that a, a million dollar got missed and who missed it, it was me. And my uh, manager called me and uh, it was, it can't be, more critical or tough than this, right? So he just told uh, JJ, I mean, you have missed a million dollar. This is the situation. Uh, I know we have worked on many deals. It hasn't happened earlier. And I believe it will not happen again too. But uh, the responsibility on is on you to sort this out. Now, how you sort this out, what you do is up to you. You tell me what support you need, but we want this closed in the next 48 hours. Right. That's all. And uh, then I took half an hour to see how I could solve it. And then I immediately reached out to the client, went to the client's place and then spent around three, four hours explaining what has happened. We did not get the entire million back, but we got 75 percentage of the million back. And uh, then he told, OK, this is how it is. And that is when I understood that 
okay i mean you can't be perfect always and making a mistake happens and there are ways and means by which you you can correct even a very big mistake so this is what i understood that day and that that brought in a very big change in the way i approach things i approached my team when they made even a big mistake of losing a million dollar i think that's how i so there was one i would say the second thing what i wanted to say is was a very very personal uh, i would say discussion where i was having with one of our leading i will not use the word leading one of a great saint uh, who i was a bit confused on what i need to do as my next step in career and uh, i was just talking and saying hey this is happening that is happening i am not happy i am happy and uh, the swamini just asked one question to me she told uh, okay jagdish you are telling all this but tell me one thing uh, uh, what do you want to be written in your obituary okay. <laughs> now whatever you are doing is going in that direction go to it if not change it wow i mean look at the end in mind and then decide whatever you want to do i mean now when my team comes to me asking hey what do i do in this particular thing i say what do you want the result to be do you want to win do you want to lose do you want to grow do you want to uh, be known as the best person or do you want to uh, make the other person happy on the other side what do you want to do right now and what is good for the organization based on that you take a decision so these two things i would say uh, i would say how to actually Uh, miss something and then again go back work on it and and do it and without any imbalance how to give a feedback to your team member even if the mistake was a was kind of as big as a million dollar <laughs> how would you how would you give a feedback is what i learned the yeah. second one was how would you really look at the end in mind mm-hmm. and act accordingly so these are the two incidents which i would like to share uh, okay thank you so much for sharing that dr jj i think 100 people on this call are going to take that million dollar example with them to yeah. their place and the next yeah. time we falter we are going to remember that if dr jj could survive <laughs> a million dollar loss i think we exactly. should <laughs> exactly thank you so much for sharing that the other thing that i really liked um, the one statement you made was you can't be always perfect and i think exactly. we have to we have to uh, understand that accept that acknowledge that uh, and take feedback and therefore seek feedback uh at as as many times as possible in order to continuously improve ourselves thank you uh, yeah. so much dr yeah. jj the very enlightening uh, stories and and responses can't thank you enough for being here with us for being our part thanks very much we'll enjoy to look towards uh, guidance from your side thank you thank you. thanks and uh, have have a nice day thank you thank you bye All right, uh, folks. I think we are getting into the meat of the uh, launch now. Uh, I'm going to hand the floor now to my colleague Karuna to unveil the sim for all of us and walk us through that. Karuna, over to you. That's awesome. Thank you, Ritwik, uh, uh, Dr. JJ. Amazing as always. It's always a pleasure to have you and speak with you. Uh, there's always something new that we take back. uh from you every time we have the con- have a conversation so thank you so much for sharing your insights um everyone on the call thank you so much for joining in i know you're all eagerly waiting to see the the simulation what it's about and that's exactly what uh, we are going to jump into today uh, at this point in time so really quickly i'm karuna i lead the content management facilitation management and customer success teams at nolscape uh, today however i'm going to be playing the role of just giving you a quick peek peek sneak a preview so to speak uh, of what our new product giving and receiving feedback is about so as we go through this we'll understand a few of the outcomes we'll understand where and when these um, the simulation can be utilized and we'll also walk you through uh, the sim demo as well a uh, very interesting statement that bill gates makes right uh, and using this statement as the base uh, this statement sort of kind of helped us form our problem statement right uh, when we started design of this uh, product and with this in mind i'm sure many of you would have heard the phrase uh, feedback is the breakfast of champions right Uh, and with that thought um, nosecape has put together uh, the whole product of giving and receiving feedback what is it that we're taking away right of course those of us who have 
are familiar with Nullscape know that we work in the simulation space. And it is our ability to create that safe environment uh, where people can practice both giving and receiving the feed and receiving feedback. Right? We all need people who give us feedback and we all have opportunities that where we are, we are giving feedback. So with all the market analysis that we did with speaking to our clients, this is what really emerged as the need, right? What do, what do organizations really struggle with? And uh, uh, Rhythmic asked that question and JJ answered it really well. What is Bosch doing to kind of work with this need that's emerging of having um, systemic, structured, uh, on-time, in-time, um, safe environment and culture for receiving feedback? And we said, we saw that organizations struggled with effectiveness of the feedback that's being given. And when, when that struggles there, then it kind of impacts um, the morale, it impacts productivity, and overall, at the end of the game, uh, the bottom line as well. So how do we really make feedback more effective? And that's what our uh, simulation is driving or striving to achieve, right? Um, in, in Rithvik's conversation with uh, JJ and even the polls that we took, you know, it was amazing to see, and I actually noted this down, 93% of us voted that culture of feedback is essential to success of the organization. We had either voted, you know, very strong or strong, and it was 93, there were only 3% that said, I do not agree, right? So 90 Six per ninety-seven percent of us feel that the culture of feedback is essential, and the simulation today is going to help us create a feedback-led culture. Uh, and as an outcome of that, drive your productivity and also ensure psychological safety. Because, like JJ was saying, you know, even having a, an environment where people feel comfortable not only to receive but also to share. Uh, is imperative to um, to what we're trying to achieve through our product. Now, where all can we really use this? And I think uh, I'm going to leave the slide up there. Uh, we can use it even for you know onboarding. Uh, we can use it, of course, for leadership upskilling uh, during a journey. So you know we offer it can be used as a standalone product. It can be used as part of a longer leadership journey. We have a sample of the leadership journey on the screen, right? Uh, you can in, integrate it into your, your own leadership journeys. So the use cases are really endless when it comes to this particular product, right? Now, what is the product? All of this that I've been talking about is really, uh, you know, leading up to um, where is the product and what is it built on, right? Now, um, the at Nolscape, we have a very clear philosophy of learn, apply, and reflect, right? Uh, we learn certain concepts, frameworks, we apply them in the simulation, and we reflect using our report and our DP. This product follows exactly the same format. The two frameworks that the simulation is built on is what we call the SOEUR model and the LCC model. Now, um, I, I, I know the chat is enabled, so I'm going to do a quick question. I know I don't have a poll ready, but how many of us are familiar with some feedback models? Uh, I'm sure, uh, you know, we've heard of the sandwich model. Um, what are some of the feedback models that you have heard of? If we can have a quick entry in the chat window, just waiting for one or two to come up. SBII, yeah, okay. <laughs> Star SBI, yes, Yusuf, thank you. Yes, Padma, thank you. The SBI model, situation behavior impact, aid, star, awesome, right? Um, so while we were researching to put the product together, we did look at many of these models, right? And one thing that we felt that was that not we we were still trying to find a, a framework that encapsulated both impact and intent. 
And that's why we kind of put these two elements as the core and absolutely, right? So we uh, thank you, Anupama. So we look at S-O-E-U-R, which is really, uh, what is the scenario, right? Um, how are you, are you giving clarity around what the scenario is that happened uh, towards which you're sharing feedback? What's the observation? What was that behavior? What was that action that actually is initiating this feedback? What was the effect of, the, of that action or behavior? And how are you making an effort to understand? And I think uh, JJ mentioned this as well, right? Not going with the I plus I want, right? But really making an, uh, an, an attempt to understand what's the other side of the story. Many times feedback becomes ineffective because we are telling our story, right? How can we understand the other person's story as well? What are the questions I can ask? Uh, to share, to kind of ensure that I'm, the feedback I'm sharing is uh, more aligned, associated, and connected with the person that's receiving that feedback. And lastly, of course, request. So you don't want to leave it open, right? Okay, so I've understood the scenario. I've, I've you know, articulated the scenario. I've told them exactly, you know, what in action or behavior I'm giving feedback towards. I'm sharing what effect it has. I'm listening and trying to understand why they could have done what they did, but we got to conclude it as well. We got to tie it up. We got to give it a nice bow, right? And for that, we request them and we share with them what is it that we expect out of this feedback, and we ask them if there are ask them for a request as well. Is there anything you would like us to do? And JJ mentioned that, right? And so it's not just me telling them, but also supporting them and asking them, requesting them what support they would require uh, to, to execute on that feedback. So this is the model that we are using for the giving feedback part. But we very, very clearly said, and I think that was one of the first things that JJ mentioned as well, is the bottom-up uh, approach with feedback as well, which means that at some point of time, I'm receiving feedback as well. Am I you know, open to receiving that feedback? So one model for the giving feedback part and for the receiving feedback part, we are looking at LCC. And what's very, very interesting to me uh, about this particular model is that the first element, which is listen to understand, actually is like a condensation of the entire SOEUR framework. Because in order to listen to understand, you need to know the scenario. You need to know the, uh, be able to articulate the observation. You need to know the effect that it's had, right? Um, and that what kind of ties it together. So are you really listening to understand? And many of us would be familiar with, um, you know, uh, Stephen Covey's um, seven habits, right? And he very famously says, seek first to understand and then be understood. So are we really listening? Um, the next thing is around clarity, which is asking the right questions, making sure, again, your intent of the question, right? Uh, and gaining clarity on what, what feedback is being given to you. And lastly, concluding it. So again, not leaving it open, but asking, sharing, summarizing, paraphrasing, and letting the person know whoever's giving you feedback, right? Um, have you understood what they have been trying to uh, to uh, communicate. Uh, Padma, I like what you're saying. Giving feedback must be like a handkerchief, light, breezy, and transparent. And receiving feedback must be like a Turkish towel, which is extensively absorbing. Very, very interesting. Thank you, Padma, for sharing that. So these are the two core frameworks around which the simulation is built. Now, with these frameworks, let me do a quick walkthrough of the simulation itself. Some new features for those of you who've been um, seeing our simulation, seeing our products, some new and exciting features coming up. I'm gonna stop my screen share and pull up uh, the screen with the uh, simulation. Now, as always, all of our simulations have a background story to it. In this story, uh, in the simulation, of course, simulation creates a safe space 
where people are able to experience, make mistakes without any negative consequences in real time, right? In the real world. So it's a great learning environment. In this context, uh, in the receiving and, feed, uh, receiving and giving feedback module, you are playing the role of Cami, uh, and you are the sales supervisor at uh, Spicebox. All right. Um, and um, Spicebox really is a consumer goods company. Very interestingly, I'm sorry, I'm pausing. Uh, you can actually have an audio read it out to you as well. Uh, so, you know, if, if you're unable to read, you can also have, um, have the audio played. Uh, so Spicebox is a consumer goods company. They, they focus on uh, spices and sp uh, spices and sauces and syrups and exotic things from Asia. They are farm to table, so to speak, directly sourcing from farmers. And they have created a mass production facility. Now, Spicebox is very, very famous, well known across Asia, and now wants to venture in in to the US market, right? Uh, they have launched a mini collection of dry Asian ingredients called the spicy. And they want to be num uh, within the top 10 sellers in the US by revenue for this product, all right? Now, remember what your role is. You are the sales supervisor for uh, Spicebox, right? Now you've completed three months and you are the say, uh, going to lead the sales team for this new venture of spicy, right? Um, like always, there is some tension. Production is pulling in one direction, distribution in one, sales in one, and the overall workflow is kind of getting disrupted. Uh, and this could prevent your team from actually achieving the target. So how do you go about uh, doing this is what we're seeing. So quick look at your team itself. And uh, you'll see the overall structure and we move into what the objectives are. Um, you will also be able to see what the, the two key objectives, how good are you at giving feedback? How good are you at receiving feedback? You can actually have her uh, audio as well. To achieve your objectives. So you need to just score four out of five for giving feedback and 80% for receiving feedback. The right. getting feedback score measures your ability to give meaningful feedback while focusing on observations and improvement. The receiving feedback score measures our ability to acknowledge and be receptive to feedback while focusing on getting clarity. You have 30 minutes to play the simulation. Every action in the simulation measures your ability to give feedback effectively and receive feedback openly. The choices you make will determine your progress on each of these objectives. So you have a voiceover as well. Um, the two main objectives of giving and receiving feedback, four out of five as an objective for giving feedback, 80% for receiving feedback. It's a shorter SIM, it's a 30 minute SIM. Uh, and of course, every action has a consequence. As you will see, it will either increase or decrease your score uh, as you play the simulation, right? So I'm gonna get into the simulation uh, at this time. All right, so a really quick walkthrough, of course, um, the, the walkthrough as well, uh, even if the simulation is being played in a self-paced mode, there is a demo that will be available like what I'm doing for you. It has a, it has a walkthrough uh, and you have 30 minutes on the clock uh, to play this simulation. The two objectives that we're talking about, remember giving feedback uh, should be four out of five and receiving feedback, your objective is to hit 80%. Right. Uh, you also have uh, the much loved leaderboard. This kind of shows you how you stand against the rest of the participants playing in the cohort. And at any time, if you need to know anything about your role or your team, uh, you can click on this and it will take you back to the original page. Now, um, a few elements that are there in the simulation. So how does the simulation work? How do we interact in the simulation? You have emails, you have phone calls, you have meetings, and you have events that will keep recurring during the course of the simulation. So let's check. There's an email in my inbox. Let's check that one. Um, 
Uh, Priyambi, uh, we are not playing the sim right now. We are just doing a demo walkthrough. Uh, we will have uh, an op opportunity at a later point in time to actually enable you to experience the simulation as well. Yeah. Uh, so right now, uh, you can see an email in your inbox. I'm going to click on this uh, and uh, quickly read it out for you. So it says, hi, Cami. Your team was able to meet only a small percentage of, percentage of the sales target this month. Moreover, I noticed that you did not delegate tasks to your teammate as per their capabilities and bandwidth. Let me remind you, low sales numbers have not only affected our profit margin, but also raised questions about your management style. Can you help me understand what went wrong? And when you reply, you get various options to respond, right? So there are four options that you can choose to respond. Um, I'm going to just quickly choose one. Uh, and, and just as a demonstration, I'm going with one. And let me click the send button, right? So if you noticed, um, my receiving feedback score actually dropped. And I will have a response uh, from Rory where it says, instead of being receptive to my message and identifying the area you need to improve, you're trying to overlook this issue. I did not expect this from you, right? So you will be able to see immediately how your responses, your choices are impacting your ability to receive or to give feedback, right? Um, I mentioned the four elements. You can respond to mails, you can have a call, meeting, and events, and these will pop up as we continue uh, to play the simulation. Uh, one more in my inbox. Here, Sejun, and... Let's see what this is about. I'm just going to do one or two more um, and um, we will go back to taking questions, right? So it says, hi, Cami, this is about uh, Maya's not curry. I've not been able to dispatch it. I'm sorry I didn't inform you. We're having trouble with production machinery. Please bear with us. And uh, Sia responds as well. Uh, she's the vice president of products management. And she says, on behalf, I'm very sorry. I didn't let you know earlier. I know it's the third time, but rest assured, we're trying to get the machinery fixed. Um, can you push the timeline by a week? Can you connect with the customer and buy us some time? Now, uh, four options appearing again. And this one's a very interesting one, right? Uh, so uh, one new feature that's been added to the simulation is the 50-50 option and ask the audience option, right? So basically what the 50-50 option does is that it removes two wrong responses, all right? So I'm gonna choose the 50-50 option right now. It removes um, two of the incorrect responses. So it gives me a greater um, opportunity to probably pick the right one, right? Um, so let, let, let's see if this one works. Um, I say, hi, CNCO, you're right. It affects our uh, team, but let's start using a collaborative channel and let's keep each other updated. And I say, send, right? So now I've been able to um, increase my giving feedback score. Uh, Sia has responded also saying, um, that she understands it and uh, machine failures and things like that. So you get to kind of see that as well, right? Um, this is the new feature that we've added as well in the simulation, which is uh, actually the use of uh, NLP. Uh, you're uh, going to actually be able to type in your response. Uh, so here is um, an, uh, 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 a scenario that says, Nicole has, been recently, has recently joined your team. Uh, having trouble building and negotiating with clients, uh, misses the target quite often. And as the leader of the sales team, you're responsible for providing feedback and guidance to her. However, you get to know that Nicole is very sensitive and quickly takes criticism to heart. How would you approach giving feedback in a way that's honest and helpful? So I can actually type a response here. So I will say something like, 
uh, set time with uh, Nicole. Uh, try to understand her challenges. Right? I'm just going to keep it short for now. And I say submit. Now, this uh, NLP um, uh, option actually looks at two elements, essence and clarity, right? Essence meaning what's the tone that you are using, right? Are you coming off harsh? Are you coming off um, helpful? What's the tone that you're using? And two, clarity, how clear are you um, uh, in your communication, right? So we submit this and uh, we get a response that my clarity is high and my essence is neutral. So my tone is neutral, but my clarity is high, right? Um, and there are uh, various options, uh, various times that this uh, option to enter free text is available to you in the simulation. Um, just one last one for, okay. So um, getting ready to close, uh, and just wanted to show you the last one around the audience poll, uh, opening out an email where you can use that. You can click on the audience poll. It allows you to take a reference. It helps you choose one. Uh, of course, audience poll always need not be right. Uh, here we have 68, that's the highest score and I'm able to kind of use that. It has worked this time around in my favor and helped me increase my receiving uh, score as well. So with this, I'm going to pause the demo of the simulation and uh, open out for any questions. Pulling up my question screen um, in just a minute. Yes, so we're opening up for any Q&A. Um, yes, so while we look at that, of course, the very important part after doing the demo is the report as well uh, before we get into the Q&A. And um, on the report, you'll be able to see, uh, of course, your overall feedback score, which is uh, how you have scored it on a scale of one to 10. Uh, the two objectives that you that you worked around, uh, which is the receiving feedback and the giving feedback and what your score is. Every um, simulation of ours is also linked to key competencies. So in this simulation, there are four core competencies that we're looking at, candor, constructive commun uh, communication, active listening and inquiry, and openness uh, that is visible. And, uh, and also, just give me a moment, please. I'll just stop my screen share and reshare it. All right. Um, so um, as well as with the NLP parts, Remember, we talked about the essence and clarity. Your report also shows you that. So it's able to show you what your score was around, uh, not a score, but how good were you in each of those situations. There are four situations that come up. And how good was the essence and how good was the clarity on each of those scenarios. So report uh, gives you an overall score. It tells you how you did on, your, uh, on the two metrics that we talked about. It covers the four competencies. It also has a note for each of the competencies and an individual score and recommendation for each of the competencies, along with the communication analysis uh, that we've included um, using the NLP tool, right? So with that, and with very little time on hand, I'm uh, moving back to Q&A. Uh, opening for Q&A, um, feel free to ask questions around the product, uh, around anything that you'd like to understand uh, that Ritwik talked about, any of our other services, assessments, coaching, uh, anything else that you'd like to know, uh, feel free to ask, uh, as well as around the content, the framework. Uh, Ritwik, myself, uh, Raghav are here to answer questions um, for you. Thank you, Karuna. So Padma, uh, answering your question, yes, it is one time audience poll, one time 50-50. Uh, that's, uh, that's how the, uh, the response would be um, in the sim. It's, it's like playing, you know, um, uh, 
uh, what's it called? Who, 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 who wants to be a millionaire, right? So you get three lifelines here in giving and receiving feedback. You have two lifelines. You can choose to you can choose to use them. You can choose not to use them, uh, but they're available for you once each throughout the simulation. Any other questions for us? You can either use the Q&A screen or uh, even the chat window if you have um, questions. And Karuna, do we leave them with an email ID for them to get in touch with us? Yes, yes. So I'll, I'll leave this up there and we will put it. Uh, I'm going to... Uh, Arch, if you can put that in the chat window to everybody. Yes. Thank you. Yusuf, we're happy to connect with you offline separately uh, and actually uh, run you through it in greater detail. Today, we're just launching it. So we just wanted to give you a taster <coughs> sample um, so do, uh, do, uh, use this poll right now, uh, and say, yes, I'm interested. And we will reach out to you and have conversation further, uh, around this specific product. So do take the poll, uh, if you'd like to further experience this, understand this a little more, uh, and have, uh, an opportunity to see it in, uh, in a little more detail, do click the poll button and say, yes, I'm interested. And uh, one of us from Nolscape will reach out to you um, to answer and uh, share that experience with you. So to uh, Padma's question, there is no penalty for using this. And yes, Ebru, it, it does become easier with that option. But remember in all of the scenarios, right? Um, you get to use this only in two. So use judicially. Yeah. All right. Uh, I can uh, see that the poll has closed. So if there are, um, um, Ritwik, if you'd like to take this up or just leaving this out here for you uh, while we are launching today, uh, the giving and receiving feedback module and product. Uh, we also have four other programs, uh, products in the pipeline um, that are coming up. So stay tuned, uh, participate in these product launches that we have. You get the first view of uh, anything that we're putting out there. Um, so thank you all for joining and uh, Ritwik, over to you. Thank you so much, Karuna. Thanks for that excellent demo. Thank you everyone for taking the time out to join us today on this journey. As you can see, we've got, a, we've got a slew of products lined up for the future, all of them very relevant in current day and time. So please spread the word and join us on the next uh, product launch and reach out to us for more information on GRF. Thank you so much again. Have a great day and a great weekend ahead. Uh, we are here for the next couple of minutes. In case anyone has any questions, we're happy to answer them. Um, but if you'd like to drop, you're free to do so as well. Looking forward to seeing you all on the next product launch and having detailed conversations around this one as well. Uh, thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful day ahead. I know we have fewer people on the call, but Triambi, if you're still there, you had asked a question around the deck. Uh, the course brochure uh, is available on our website. You can access it on the website and take a look at, uh, at the frameworks and things like that over there as well.
Hey, thanks, Karuna. Uh, this is wonderful. I could only join in the last 20 minutes, but it, uh, you know, I just got pulled into something. Uh, I'm, I'm, I feel bad that I've kind of missed this out. But anyways, um, I got a flavor of it even in the last, last maybe 15 minutes or whatever you were saying. Awesome. Priyambi, um, I hope you, uh, you know, said yes to the poll and we'll definitely yeah. reach out and, you know, kind of I, have I have, for the uh, conversation. I have said yes, but awesome. help me understand, uh, will we get a, a chance to, uh, do the simulation ourselves? The way we've done so where's that link or whatever so that's what i've been asking yeah, for yeah yeah so uh today priyambi was more of a just a launch uh this is like a like a product launch in general we will have what we call uh an edge session sometime uh and even before that if once we reach out to you we can you know have you uh experience it as well uh Ritwik, if you'd like to add to that no just a similar response karana we'll do uh we are getting to a point where we'll start doing walkthroughs for our clients Right. Uh, and then once you we've uh, once we've walked your team through the simulation, we can offer demo IDs as well for your team to experience it and then take it up from there. All right. Lovely. Lo lovely, Dr. Ritwik and Gavna. Um, also, what I understand normally uh, all your products are based on some sort of uh, framework. I just got a glimpse of that framework. Uh, you know, I think the report is probably also based on that framework. Right. And uh, uh, whenever we connect next or otherwise would you be able to also share uh, the lens from which you are really going to be looking at this because we'd like to see if that's kind of matching or at least pseudo uh, mapping on to what uh, we would normally like to encourage in our organization absolutely priyambi and and which organization do you represent, Priyambi? Uh, Dr. Ritwik, I'm with Times Internet Limited. We are undergoing a very interesting uh, journey of PMS transformation, uh, which we are only at this point in time piloting, rather co-creating and piloting within HR at the moment, okay. so that HR can champion it later. Sure. Uh, uh, one, after iterating, reiterating, uh, we are actually moving away from ratings which lays a lot of in emphasis on the quality of conversations that will happen because the whole uh, discussion and focus is going to be on performance acceleration and not performance, um, not right. using it as a system to box people into certain, yeah. you know, Numbers. biased pieces, right? Or a slotted Slotted slots. I don't have any other words for it. <laughs> Absolutely, but, uh, Priyambi. So, um, so this is going to become interesting, important for us. Priyambi, um, would it be possible for you to leave your uh, email ID on the chat and we can pick it up from there? And, and So uh, Ritwik Priyambi has said yes to the poll. So we will pick it up from, from her response. Cool. Also, uh, typically, I don't know how many people are here on the chat still. But, uh, and you can choose not to answer this, but typically on an average, what's the uh, per person cost that it comes out to be? I just want to, a very ballpark in general, not for this product. Typically, does it make sense for, uh, you know, because when we do this, uh, we'll have to obviously work this out saying, do we do this only for managers? Or we want to do it for anybody in the organization because receiving and giving feedback can be by anyone to anyone, not just a, you know, downward, upward type of thing alone. True. Uh, but obviously, everything goes with budgets. So. Sure. No, absolutely agree. And, and a very valid question, Priyami. Most uh, clients and people who join the session do ask us that. We do operate on a subscription model and we do have rack rates. But the rates also get influenced significantly with several triggers or drivers like volumes, yeah. uh, the connectedness of the simulation that we are doing in order to build a journey, the career levels of people that are joining in. So all of that consideration goes into creating a very um, custom pricing sheet, so-called, uh, for every client. So we will okay. need to have a little more Absolutely. Uh, in order Absolutely. to get to a point uh, on the pricing. Absolutely. And also one last question. Do you tie up with partners uh, or, of uh, employee experience systems? Like uh, we have Darwin Box or do you guys um, uh, have any types of, with Disperse, for example, which is their product and that's their learning. So we use the Disperse platform for yes. all our learning and development. And then that 
dispersed platform will tie up with the rest of the uh, available uh, you know pool of courses or experiences or conversations recorded webinars yes. uh, in order for a person to take a learning journey yes uh, okay. since we are already there we would it will be difficult for us to get into a new uh, type of a thing but if you can tie up sure then it, it becomes very easy for us sure so we i i do know that our system is compatible and integrable with most lmx as well as lms and uh, another way of us doing this is putting our products on top of the yes. lmx that you already have so that your population or your professionals have one stop shop for yes. all their learning requirements yes so do you by any chance already have a tie up with uh, uh, davan box we we don't have a tie up but the way our products get developed it is it can easily be integrated with the current lmx and are you planning see because it becomes extremely uh, easy for us yeah. if you have a like a corporate to corporate tie up with them uh, rather than and and that by the way will also I mean, this is like i'm talking like a a person want, wanting to increase your business but i definitely do want to it becomes like a channel for you all yes uh, dr ritwik uh, and karuna uh, because db will have 500 clients or 1000 clients and all of them out of them at least 70% will be using or 60% will be using disperse right. as a platform right so have you guys been thinking on those lines because then we can be a little bit more you know we do have a very active partnership team okay but let's we can take this conversation offline to see you know the Absolutely. kind of partnerships that we've already established in the market and yeah. the ones that are in the pipeline for us to go forward sure with. and any uh, uh, specific lmx where you have established this partnership because we may then be also looking at uh, you can think of that most uh, with most large organizations priambi like tcs wipro uh we have integrated our platforms with them i don't remember the name of the lmx or the lms that they use um but uh, i do, yes i can take that up real quick thank you so much so, priyamma this is kalyan uh, so we don't have active partnerships typically we don't need them because all our courses are ex are scom compliant uh, so it's only a matter of uh, fact if, if the lms is scom compliant in which almost 99% of them are it just has it's just an integration which is a straight, straightforward integration just like any other course integration happens on lms so there's no necessity of a partnership passage because it's a straightforward process there's no additional effort also involved I so we export as a scom they just imported just like any other course i see okay got that thank you so much kalyan sure got it thanks guys we will connect up offline thank you priyam uh, i'll make sure that my lnd uh, head is along uh, there with me as well so i lead the total rewards and performance management within til so me and arunma both of us will try and be uh, available for a meeting with you all thank uh, you thank Just you take care to. thank you so much bye bye uh, padma i know you've had your hand raised uh, is there a question i can answer padma i can just mention one thing that i love the simulation in terms of the graphics and in particular the option that new feature that you talked about where people can enter their yeah. responses i i, I think that that is something which is because uh, this is something that i was personally missing for example in certain other things where straight jacketed choice of one of the four was the only option available now giving this option for people to enter the text and then to be able to look at that like you said from an nlp and an artificial intelligence perspective to really look at the response and see the essence and clarity is something that is wonderful i just have one suggestion if i may sure. that when i get to know that for my response the essence is let's say moderate and the clarity is low for example suppose i get that kind of a thing would it also be possible to give a button where you press that and see a sample of a high essence high clarity response you know for example i would like to know i do understand that this response that i gave was of moderate quality but i want to see how a high quality response looks like so is it feasible to have a sample response also displayed where it will tell me okay this is 
what a high quality response looks like. Sure, uh, Putma. So I'm I'm gonna uh, keep that uh, as a thought and uh, taking that, noting that down. Uh, but just to kind of sort of give you a heads up, once you type that response and you get that essence and clarity score, you also get an answer to that email or whatever that you're you've put, right? So apart from your uh, giving feedback score and your receiving feedback score being impacted, you get a written response to your email or whatever you've put in, right? Saying that, um, you know, uh, I, I think you could have worded this better or you could, there was no need to be so rude or harsh, right? So there will be such impact uh, responses that will come back that will be indicated. Uh, I think we can talk more about whether we need to have a direct answer to it, um, because I feel that would be too much of a cheat for the rest of the thing. And maybe, Padma, since you're familiar, we can actually bring it out as scenarios in the debrief conversations as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you so much, Padma. Thank you. All right. Uh, I can still see quite a few of us on the call. If there are any further questions, uh, anything you'd like to share, um, we're happy to listen. Uh, else, uh, we're formally closing this conversation uh, over the next three to five minutes. All right, thank you everybody for joining in. Appreciate your time. Uh, look forward to continuing this conversation. This is only the start. Uh, so look forward to talking with all of you and continuing this conversation around giving and receiving feedback. Have thank a wonderful you, day, everybody. Uh, okay. Thank you, bye-bye.